Okay, hi everyone. My name is Louisa Bankston and I'm the Admissions and Marketing Manager at the U.S. Studies Center. How many of you know about the U.S. Studies Center? Okay, good. Um, I'm just going to briefly introduce a few of my colleagues who are here and you'll probably become quite familiar with them if you're deciding to apply for the program. So Amelia Trial, do you want to join so she'll be helping a lot with the application process and getting the accepted students ready to go to Los Angeles. And then Craig Purcell, he will um, likely be on the ground in Los Angeles with those students who get selected for the program. And then I just wanted to introduce Christy from the <coughs> Faculty of Arts and Warren from the Faculty of Business down here in the front. So they're here and they'll be able to help answer some of the credit approval questions that you might have at the end. Um, so to kick us off, I've invited a couple of alumni of the program who went last year to share a few words with you about their experience. So let's start with Tiernan. Do you My use of the UCLA study abroad experience began for me before I'd even left the country. In fact, it began in this very lecture theatre about a year ago. There I was as a third year combined law student, sitting toward the back middle section, waiting for the same presentation to begin. Thinking to myself, I really want something out of university life, something more. I want to broaden my horizons. I want to challenge myself. Maybe even escape the wet and dreary Sydney winter if I was lucky. So for an hour, I listened to stories from previous students who had been on the program, who spoke of amazing global friendships being forged on UCLA's prestigious and pristine campus, of palm tree line weekends lying on Malibu Beach, all the while getting two units of study out of the way. Immediately, I knew this was the program for me, and standing here almost eight months later, I can say that, cliches aside, the six weeks spent at UCLA was one of the most enriching and fulfilling uh, periods of my life. The advantages of the trip begin before you've even left. Unlike an exchange where you are more than likely traveling by yourself and doing all your own admin, the study center sends approximately 40 diverse Sydney Uni students, all of whom have the opportunity to meet at various pre-departure sessions. The fact that you have a strong support base going over there cannot be overstated. Not only do you have new friends to study and travel with, but pretty soon after arriving, you earn a reputation as that fun and cool new Aussie group on campus who everyone wants to know, and that really does have its purpose. My experience on the program centered around the rich campus life. Attending a public university during a summer school period meant that I was engaging with one of the most diverse and global student bodies in the world. Whether it was sitting in one of UCLA's numerous dining halls, talking to local students about UCLA's chances in the upcoming college football, or having a convivial debate in class with an international student about politics, the experience helped me to adopt a more open and international worldview, whilst creating a global network of friends who I've still stayed in contact with to this day. Unlike Sydney, where tutorial presentations are often, or participation, should I say, are often perceived as a more laborious and kind of annoying task, the structure of classes at UCLA were largely orientated around was shaped around in-floor, informed class discussion that engaged with the fact that Americans are a very opinionated group of people. This created an environment which taught me to really think about my opinion and be critical. I was fortunate enough to have chosen two highly engaging subjects. One political science subject called Congress, which not only explained to me what House of Cards is really about, but it was taught by an interesting man named Stonegarden Brylife. When I asked one of his normal students about the name Stone Garden Grind Life, he replied to me that he was born with a normal name, but changed it because he was wanting to be really ultra and uber hippie, and wanted a name that was bizarre and as alternative as possible. And I really couldn't argue with this. My other subject was entertainment law, which I found fascinating not only because I study law, but because it was taught by a prominent attorney in LA called Keith Fink who had the distinction of suing Ellen DeGeneres in his litigation career. In the last week of classes, Professor Fink opened the doors of his law practice, Fink and Steinberg Attorneys, and invited those students interested in a legal career to be an intern for a day. It was the endless opportunities such as these outside of the classroom which really made the program special. I was fortunate enough to structure my timetable so that I only had two, hours, um, two days of contact hours, allowing me ample free time. 
When I wasn't in class, I made it my goal to engage in all the campus had to offer, and I guess surrounding LA as well. If I wasn't using my man, the many world-class facilities on campus, or gawking at the famous houses um, by going for a run around Bel Air, which is just, I guess, across the road from the campus, or maybe even attending the premiere of Red 2 in the local West, Westwood Village, I was having an amazing time. And I thought to myself that even the simple action of staying in your residence and speaking to your roommates, who could be from anywhere in the world, you don't know these people, and you're forced to introduce yourself to them um, and have really lively and interesting um, conversations. I thought this was an amazing, amazing experience. So I was fortunate enough to be in a particularly adventurous group of Australians who had done their research on TripAdvisor and Yelp to maximise the four or so days you have uh, free each week. This meant that it felt like we covered almost every square inch of LA by trip's end, from visiting the famous Getty Museum to the Warner Brothers Studios, to attending a live recording of Jimmy Kimmel, soaking up the sun in Orange County, hiking up Griffith Observatory, and taking in the stunning views across LA. So not only are the Instagram opportunities endless, but you are bound to create memories, memories with friends that you're on these trips with that will last a lifetime. The convenience of UCLA's position means that you can use it as a base for amazing weekend trips away. From attempting to recreate the hangover in Vegas, to embracing your inner hipster and entrepreneurial spirit on the streets of San Francisco, or going all into the wild and experiencing the breathtaking surrounds of Yosemite National Park. So guys, let me reiterate that the UCLA Study Abroad Program is an exceptional way to experience the world and forge global connections at one of the world's leading academic institutions. I distinctly remember one of my final nights at UCLA, we had, um, a, I guess, a networking opportunity um, which was hosted at the um, Australia's Consulate General um, to the US at her residence. Um, and I distinctly remember going away from that conversation and thinking, where else am I, get, am I going to get these opportunities? Uh, it's not every day you get to stand and, and have a conversation to Australia's you know, Consulate General over there, or even speak to a variety of leading business professionals who are also in attendance at this particular event. So I'd encourage you that even if you're umming and ahhing about applying for the program, I'd say do it. Submit an application. You might just have a life-changing experience and forge memories that are going to last the rest of your life. So thanks for listening and I'll stick around to answer any of your questions. Thanks. Uh, now I'll have Dalton come up, take his turn, and either Dalton's photos on the bottom. <laughs> He'll probably explain them. Thank you very much. Okay, so I might break this down slightly differently to how Keenan did it. Um, mine is more, I'll break down the case of why I personally wanted to go on uh, to UCLA's exchange program, and then a bit more about my story. So, bottom line for me as a, I guess, commerce law student is that going on this exchange really represented two key benefits for me over my winter break. Um, first of all, is academic. In the space of about six weeks, you go through two subjects. So that's two subjects, half a semester, off your workload. Um, that gives you flexibility um, for the completion of your degree but it also gives you the ability, specifically for uh, commerce students, to be able to go outside of what the commerce degree actually allows you to do and choose subjects that you might not have been able to access at University of Sydney. So example, I personally went for entertainment law, um, which was actually a um, communication subject as well as another communication subject and really sort of started understanding what other um, degrees and other sort of disciplines hold. Uh, but the second aspect, I guess, is more about the social benefits that you get from it. Because you're going overseas with a group of about 40 people, um, you actually bond with these people and you spend so much time with them and form really close uh, relationships and friendships. Um, and that, in combination with the fact that you have, um, you have this academic expertise now from a world-renowned uh, in university, means that basically um, it, it's the most efficient way to uh, ensure that your CV is basically ready for your job if, you wanna, if, you've gra if you're going to graduate at the end of that year. So a bit more about my story. So how did I start? Well, I didn't actually attend one of these information sessions, I have to admit, but I was very well aware of this actual exchange um, through the previous um, DC internship program that I, that I actually attended the information session for. 
Um, and so I thought this actually represented a slightly uh, different value proposition and a bit more along the lines of what I was looking for, something a bit more relaxed whilst still being able to offer the expertise um, that UCLA has in specific subjects. Um, so the first thing that I realised when I actually arrived off that plane was that it is actually like the movies. So if you've ever seen a, uni like if you've ever seen a university, um, US movie or anything like that, um, you, you have like the fire hydrants, you have like the people, how they sort of act, how they talk, all of that's actually real. And that one little realisation was something that the 40 people that came with me actually shared. For the first, I don't know, maybe one to two weeks, you actually realise that this, you, you're basically living in a movie and that the whole movie idea is actually <laughs> quite real. Um, then, my first time in, a, in an actual food hall, the, what this picture sort of represents, um, I realised that the Americans really like to have large portions of food. And you basically can eat as much as you want. There is no limits, um, there's only time limits. So you can get in at maybe, um, I, for, I forgot the exact times, but you probably have about a three hour window to eat as much as you possibly can. So this was my attempt on the first day, I can happily say by the end of the sixth week, I probably, well, I probably got to the ability to maybe double that level of plate. Um, but yeah, so that, 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 was a, that was a fun experience. Um, but the other massive thing for me was I actually turned 21 when I was overseas, which opened up the world of um, the bars, drinking, stuff like that. But it also meant that I had to celebrate, right? Like when you turn 21, you become sort of full adult. So what did I do? I ended up traveling down to San Diego um, to actually skydive. So I skydived in San Diego um, on the Thursday. I turned uh, 21 on the Wednesday. And then for that weekend, we decided with a group, me and a group of friends, we flew off to Las Vegas. Um, there we went to actual, uh, we went to um, a Tiesto. So the Tiesto was like a resident DJ of like a club. So we went there um, and basically did the whole weekend there. One thing that you do find though is when you are traveling to these different cities, like Las Vegas, San Francisco, um, people went to New York, San Diego, you actually tend to go together. So it's a, lot, it's a lot more comfortable than you deciding to leave your group of 40 people to then go, oh, I want to go to New York, and then you're alone. You're actually probably going to be with friends. So you, have, you know, no matter what city you're in, there's always people you know. And so it gives you that sense of comfort that a normal exchange wouldn't give you. Um, and yeah, basically at the bottom line, why I decided to come, well, why I decided to go to UCLA was that it gives me access to a prestigious university, access to subjects that I would not have normally done, but bottom line also access to basically a vacation experience, but still one that does not sacrifice um, my academic development.
you can cover in the winter break. It allows you to accelerate your degree and um, get those credit points outside of the regular semester. So what are the benefits? I think they pretty much covered most of these, but um, gaining invaluable international experience, this is something that future employers are really going to value highly when they see it on your CVs, and it will really help you stand out above the other candidates, showing that you went and studied at one of the top universities in the world. You'll get to live on campus and experience um, the whole American college life. I think as an American, I love hearing when Australians say that it's just like the movies. <laughs> but it really is. You'll, you'll pinch yourself quite often, especially in LA, um, realizing that you are living this life. Um, you'll get to spend your winter break in California this summer, so that's a pretty good reason to escape the cold. And you'll make long-lasting friendships with Americans and internationals from all over the world who are studying in the summer session. So it's a six-week program. The dates run from the 23rd of June to the 1st of August. Um, I know many of you have commented on how this is overlapping with your last week of exams. So this is something that we work with you and your professors to do your exams over in LA. So your first week in Los Angeles will be doing makeup exams for those who will be missing anything in the last week. So that's something that we'll be able to help you um, get approved with your, with your professors. And then you'll be missing the first week of second semester, which you just need to um, let your professors know that you'll be missing out. You'll be enrolling in two units of study and receive 12 credit points for those units. And you'll have hundreds of courses to choose from. I'll show you some of them in just a second. And accommodation meals will be included in the program. And we'll have a series of free departure seminars and sessions for you here through the U.S. Study Center and activities in L.A. So some of those activities in the past have been trips to Disneyland, LA Dodgers baseball game, the reception of Australian consulate. So there's plenty of things on the ground that we'll have planned for you that are included. So the units of study will be available online later this afternoon. Um, I'm sure many of you have been checking back to see, and right now it's just the registration form. But after this session, all of the information will go live, so you're going to be able to access all of that. You must complete two four-unit courses. So we've already selected a list of four-unit courses on our website for you to choose from. So you have to choose from that list on our website. Um, I'll just show it to you quickly, just so you know what to look for. So this will be the page on the website, and it will explain everything about credit approvals and how to go about getting them. And then all the courses are listed here. And as you can see, there's a lot. So, some of them have asterisks next to them. I just want to make sure that you realize those classes are five units instead of four. You're welcome to take them, but you will have to pay an extra fee for that extra unit. It all says it on the page. I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that. Um, and I'll show you quickly how you're able to look at the descriptions of the courses, because right now it's just the names, and you might want to know a little bit more about them. So just here, there's a paragraph explaining how. If you just go to the schedule of classes on the UCLA page, you select summer 2014. And let's do, let's look up something. We'll look at the cultural history of Iraq. So you'll go under Afro-American studies. And then the session you're studying in is session A. Again, this is all on the website, just showing you. And you'll select your course. And if you click the nine-digit unit number just here, it'll bring up a description of the course. So that's how you can get a little bit more information when you're deciding which ones you want to enroll in. So on the application form, you'll have to select four units that you prefer in order of preference, because they are all subject to availability. So if one of them is full, we'll have to take your third choice, or if one of them, for some reason, doesn't get offered anymore, we'll have to use one of your other choices. So all of these units, we will help you make sure these are all credited as elective units. We've been working with Christy from Arts and Warren from Business to make sure that that's possible for you. Um, if you would like that to be a specific unit towards your major, you're going to have to seek further approval for that. But we'll assist you through all of that if you're accepted onto the program. And I just realized, for business students, I wanted to show you that we have a specific list for you. 
Um, so you'll see that there's a link on the unit study page that you can click. And it'll bring up a list of the courses that you can choose from and the credit that you'll get for them. So you need to choose from this list, okay? And Calm Law students, same for you. You have a very specific list of units that you're allowed to choose from to come onto this program. So you go onto the website, you'll also have a list that you can open up and see what you can choose from, okay? Okay. So accommodation, you'll be living on the hill, which is what the students call the dormitory area on campus. Um, they're on-campus furnished halls, you choose from triple or double rooms, and you can choose how many meals you want a week. We recommend doing the double room, 11 meals a week, but it's totally up to you and your budget how you, however you want to do it. Um, I'll show you just a quick video of the housing, just so you can give an idea of what it's like to live on campus. My name is Simone, I'm a UCLA freshman, and I'm here to introduce you to living on campus. are here on the hill. That's where undergraduates live at UCLA. Here we are at the south end of the hill. This is Deneb Plaza. The buildings here have tree or plant names, from A for Acacia through H for Holly. Here's Holly. It's where I live. It's the center of the universe. Please! On the north end of the hill is Sunset Village, with places like Canyon Point and Courtside. I live in Courtside. It's right by the tennis court. Tennis is fun, but a fast match your game is a bunch of other things to do. Like an outdoor gym. Or basketball. Or volleyball. <laughs> or swimming. In between the Death Plaza and Sunset Village, there's a mixture of new and updated buildings. For instance, there are the three Reavers, Reaver Hall, Reaver Vista, and Reaver Terrace. On the hill, you're never very far from Central Campus, where your classes, library, and student services are. More than 90% of new students live on campus. When you live here, you get oriented to campus life sooner. The food is great, and you have a choice of four different restaurants here. for the daily menu or nutritional facts, if you want to. This is a great place to live. Let's now check out our room. They have an award-winning dining program, and Deneb is one of the best. So let me show you around. Some people hang out in their rooms, but there's a whole student neighborhood with places to study and places to kick back.
little section. So we have the fixed fee package, which you pay to the U.S. Study Center, and that covers your tuition, your insurances, all the administrative fees. You get a brewing card, which is what you'll need to get around campus, and your meal plan will be on there to use in the um, food halls that they mentioned. And it also covers all of your pre-departure seminars um, that we'll be having here for you in Sydney, and all of your activities in Los Angeles. That includes the trip to Disneyland, Dodgers game, and any of those other activities. Uh, we allow you the flexibility to choose your own accommodation and book your own flights, just so that you can uh, take towards your budget. So for the accommodation options this year, there are two halls available for the summer session, and they are both the same price. And these are all listed on the website, and you can have a look on the UCLA housing website to get some more photos and look through the rooms and make a decision on what you would want. And these fees will be paid directly towards UCLA housing, and it's something that will help you with through one of the pre-departure sessions. The last thing will be your visa and airfares, so that will be a separate cost to everything else. And then of course your entertainment and everything that you're wanting to do, traveling around the states, will be at your own expense. So there are ways to help fund this, um, so don't think that it immediately counts you out after seeing that. Uh, OS help loans are available through the Study Abroad Exchange Office, and those applications are something that we will help anyone who's interested in applying to a group application. Uh, and so those are valued from 1062.50. So you can um, use that to help fund your, fund your program. And we'll also be awarding U.S. Study Center scholarships. So you'll automatically be considered for those scholarships when you apply. There'll be a section on the um, application for you to provide some details. Um, so those are some different ways that you can receive funding for it. So are you eligible? This program is open to all undergraduate students, both local and international, that are enrolled in a faculty of arts or business school degree. So I'm sorry if you're from another faculty. Unfortunately, this is only for business and arts. Uh, you must have completed at least 48 credit points by the end of this semester, and you must have a minimum wear of 65%. Um, when we say demonstrate a potential to be an outstanding ambassador, uh, we want to send students that will represent the U.S. Study Center and the University of Sydney well, and we judge that through some free answer questions on the application. So you'll be able to answer those questions. Some of them are about your leadership experience, um, why you want to go on the program, things like that that will help us judge if you would be a good representative for the program. And it is desirable if you have completed a U.S. Study Center unit. How many of you have done a unit at the center? Okay, that's good. And it is desirable that you have at least 12 elective points left in your degree. So room for 12 elective points so that you can get full credit for the program. We want students who will be able to um, get everything out of this program that they can. But that being said, if you don't have room for that, you can still apply. We still consider students who might only have six or um, might have to look into other options. So how do you apply? The, the online application form will be live later this afternoon. Um, you do have to pay a $400 deposit at the time of the application. This is just to show that you are serious about committing to the program, and it's a deposit towards your full payment fee. So um, if you don't get accepted on the program, you'll be refunded the $400. If you do get accepted, you will have a week to decide if you want to commit. If not, you'll still get your $400 back. But once you do commit to the program, that $100 is not refundable. Um, applications are due the 31st of March. I'm just going to briefly show you the application now. It'll be online, but I thought you might want to just have a quick look. Um, it's pretty straightforward, just personal details, your degree, information about your degree. If you're an international student, and if you have these test results, we ask you to please upload them with your application. If you don't, you can still apply, that's okay. Um, you'll just take this box and let us know that you don't have test scores. It just makes things easier further down the road if you upload them now. We'll need your passport details and upload a um, copy of the photo page in your passport. And 
here's a question where you'll do the $400 payment. You just click this link and it'll open up a payment page. Um, it will. <laughs> and then you put your receipt number in here and we'll be able to check that you paid that. Um, here's where you'll check, select your units and all of those links are here for you to see what units you can choose from. And then here's the free answer section. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and it'll be online later this afternoon, so you can start applying. But do make sure you look through it and understand everything involved so you allow enough time to complete it before the deadline. Okay, almost done. So the important dates. I really want you to make sure that you look at the important dates on the website because you have to be able to commit to these dates to come on to the program. So, for example, we are having an enrollment session for the students that are accepted onto the program on April 15th. It is compulsory for all of you to attend this session so that we can enroll you in your courses at UCLA. Um, there's a whole list of the different deadlines that you need to make sure you're available for. I'll just pull them up really quickly. Okay, so they're on the web page here. You'll be able to find all of it listed. So, um, make sure you read through that carefully and can commit to those dates before you apply for the program. That includes the actual dates of the program. So you're not allowed to come late or leave early. You have to do the full six weeks. Because it's taught intensively, you cannot miss any class or you won't be able to receive full credit for your courses. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The next step is to visit the website later this afternoon. I gave it about an hour and it should be live. Um, read through all the program conditions and guidelines that are listed there um, and make sure it's the right thing for you and it fits with what you want to do. And submit your applications and deposit by the 31st of March. You can submit any questions that you have after you've read through everything. If there's still something that hasn't been answered on the website, there's a little spot where you can submit a question and we'll get back to you by email. Um, if you have any questions, I can answer them now, or you can come to the front, and we also have the faculty advisors here who can answer questions. So let's do a few for the whole room in case you all have the same question. Anyone? Don't be shy, I know you're all going to run down here at the end. 